Shout out Tone Sunshine. And then he starts telling the story. This, that shit. Chapo and, and Pablo be mixing. This is shit to kill the dope <laughs> fiends, the fentanyl. You know, it's the pure shit. Never step. So he's telling the story about fentanyl. And it's ill. You know how Ross, you know, he was yeah. in one of those. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he finished, I said, Sampo, Sampo, Sampo. <laughs> Yo, rap. Yo, rap. Yo, Dre's eyes opened up like. Because he knew I was going like this. I was like, yo, I was telling him, you know, back in the day when I used to hustle, I used to walk down 10 blocks. Every So many fiends and, and, and hustlers out there. And I used to walk with like five bundles in my hand and I would be like, sample, samples. So I'm not proud of it, but I tell them this story. I used to get out the samples, line them up, throw it in the air. People died. They get high. They tell me if it's good enough. And they looking at me, him, his whole crew is like, and I'm like, that's and to a degree, you got it. You got it. You know, I got a lot of stories. Prime example of you got to tell a better story. Like, I, I've never seen somebody be able to just tell a story. You just chill, sit back, like, all right, that's their story. You're going to top their story. Like, it's, it, I'm used to it. I just, Pat, I'm, I'm not even going to hold you. Pat be in another room. I know when he's watching you. He be in there like he locked in the room with Dave Chappelle. <laughs> if you Yo, wake up the baby, we gonna fight. He be in that. I think you skipped the day one time. He looked like a sad puppy, like a kid that the mom took their PlayStation away. He came Man, that was Khaled. Khaled and my and my, you know, Khaled just started eating seafood, so he couldn't eat seafood his whole life. Yeah, he was allergic to seafood, but he did the doctor did the test, and all of a sudden he ain't allergic to seafood. You got so I'm now he got crab legs, lobster, mm -hmm. shrimp. I mean, you, the boil you made me. What's that called? That's what it is. It's a boil. A boil. He got the shit every now. Nah, you nah, it's in bad. <laughs> yo, it's almost a, a illegal to have that much food, right? <laughs> so he's begging me, yo, don't do the show, don't do the show. And Loren is like, yo, don't do the show. Take a day off. But I was in my heart. My my DNA was like, they, yo, I got to get on there. They were trying to talk you out of your blessing. They were trying to talk you out of your blessing. <laughs> you see, Pat Poos was mad. But I be like wondering, yo, am I wasting my time? Or are these people like really listening? Right? So yeah, People really be and, listening. People really be listening. I'm telling you, that was the question to myself of the day. Right? And I had... Uh, I had Pretty Lou. Mm. I think you told me the Pap story. Um, just a, 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 out of weird, at least five calls of people telling me, yo, you know, I watch a show like it's a real show every day. And I'm no, tuned it, in it, and it I'm laughing and you're crazy. I've watched, first of all, I mean, let me tell you something, people. I'm not talking to you no more, Joe. Let me tell you something. I've watched him do a show. He has his beverage on the side. He makes sure that his sponsored products is visible in the back. He got a fresh shape up, like he about to go and really do something crazy. Like he wants silence. He got his lights set up. He got his notes on the side. He has his little note. <laughs> he be so focused. Everybody got to be quiet. But he does that with everything. And, that, and that's why everything that you do you're successful because you od like you take everything super serious you want to be the best you want to know like it's been times when you call me like yo i'm about to interview someone and what i have i have good questions but is there anything that you think that people might want to know so i think that's what makes great viewing i, I can't even say tv i mean it comes on tv too but this is the new tv people got their tv right in their hand so it, it's entertaining yes. so it becomes a you remember like how your mom's Growing up, she used to watch the novellas every day at a certain time, or the stories, or Wheel of Fortune, or whatever it is at that time. Like, it starts to be, it's a part of your day. So, when you skip a day, even though to you, it may seem like, yo, all right, people don't really care, or whatever. It's certain people, like Pat, who literally have 8 o'clock programs into their brain to tune into the Fat Joe show. I'm just waiting you know, for them to give you that, that big, big studio so I could be in the back. Oh, no, that studio coming. Say, that studio coming, that shit going to be the biggest shit. 
<laughs> nah, that shit gonna be big. You gonna have your office. I'm gonna let you act stink with the with, with the ads, all of them. Like yo, man, what they said? Nah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, my brother don't like that. Um, hey, Rev, is this yeah. guy talking to me? Nah, I don't think he's talking to you, Joe. Wait, yo, you sure? No, he... no. Oh, uh, who put these who put these sodas in? The... He likes it when the name is facing forward. Empty the whole refrigerator. Do it again. <laughs> Yo, Ram, let me tell you something, man. I'm proud of you. Uh, I don't want to tell your business. Can I say something about what, what was recently purchased or stay quiet? You can, you can say it. No, nah, you, nah, 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 nah. You I'm, not, not, I'm, I'm not like that. I don't, I don't brag. I just do what I, I do. I know. I don't want to brag. I don't want to brag. I just want to say, yo, shout out to Eric B., the motherfucking godfather of this show. Uh, you know... I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say about that. I'm not going to do that. But all I can say to you is that I'm proud of you. Thank you know, you. my sister's become a boss. People out there, I've been begging her to do an album too. But <laughs> she's been doing so lucrative on all these other things. Yo, Rem, how do you do this? Like, <laughs> I want to know, you're not, you're not rapping. There's no tour. And you just... It's a Gemini thing, you know, the jack of all trades. We can do many, many things, and we're good at several things. But um, I think that, I don't know, I, I genuinely think that I'm a good person. I have a good heart. I go out into the world with the idea of me being good to people. Like, of course, anybody can get the business. Like, let's, let's be clear. Like, they know the vibes. But for the most part, I'm a good person. And even when people do craziness to me or when things aren't really exactly how I want them to be. Somehow, some way, it always falls back in my favor. Yo, Rem, it's going to be a scene in the, the thing we can't say who, but it's going to be a scene where we're going to show a hundred guys chasing all of our favorite rappers down the strip. <laughs> and then they're going to come by and they're going to look at us. They're going to be a hundred deep and it's going to be three of us. Mm. Me, you, and Tone Patrol. <laughs> and they're going to look in the light. Because remember, the light was on them, like, looking mm. crazy. And they turned around and said, hey, yo, we such and such. And we was 3D. Okay. And we was like, no, nigga, this is Terror Squad. <laughs> <laughs> yo, <laughs> man, we got to happen. In the, that's it. Just that scene. We can leave it away from that. But that scene has got to happen in like the series. The 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 series. I think I think sometimes what people think, if people don't see it, it's so crazy. If people don't see it on social media, it didn't happen. If I'm not posting mm. that I'm on a jet, I never took a jet. If I don't post that, I got oh. a thousand pairs of every color of the newest sneaker bag, everything that came out, I don't have it. But I just, I come from a different era where that's whack. Like, it was whack to brag if you had, like, if you had, it was like, you not used to something, you must have never got it. Like, it was so, the not norm, so. Look at me, like, if it was now, I would have had 36,000 pictures with Biggie. I only got like one or two, like, because it was late, whack. You taking pictures. You yeah, it was out whack. All the time. I'm not going to take a picture with you. How you doing? What's up? We, just wanted, we was around the best of them and never took a picture because it's just like, you know, it is what it is. But we live differently now, and I'm trying. I'm really, really trying to get into that. I, I swear I am. And we adjusted. Just, so, you know, with me, it would be like, um, so at one time, when we came up, it was like a mystique about, you know, not really talking, not really like we were going to the club and just stand on top. Shout out E. Yeah. Philly, stand on the couch, ice grill everybody, won't talk to nobody. But amongst us, right. oh, that's Joey, that's Ram, right. it's whatever, right? Like, I've been seeing your two step a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I've been seeing your moves. Well, and what I'm saying to you happen. is, it wasn't cool back then, but now, since the COVID or whatever, it allowed me to turn on this and show people my real personality because it is what it is. And then talk about different things. And it's, it's, it's us converting See, to different. 2020. I've been telling you that. I've been telling you. When I first came home and I seen you doing the Market America, I was like, this 
is what you, is what you're good at. Like you good, you your 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 talk is so fantastic. Like it's been times where I've been feeling like, oh my god, the world's over. Who's that life. Pat over there I, laughing? You know he is. I looked into five minutes. And I'd be like, ready to take over the world. Like, you have that. That's something that it's part of your DNA. But I'm talking about the next thing where we know you have one million gazillion pairs of the fly sneakers that nobody on the planet in the world can ever get or will mm -hmm. ever get in life. Mm -hmm. But it's just not, it's weird when you see people and they're like, yo, I got this. You're like, it's, I don't know. It's, it's a bragging thing. It's all, it doesn't seem to me. Like some, it's just not cool to me, but that's the way right now. And if you don't, if you don't have one, you know, the chandelier on your arm, then you don't have it. If you're not like this, hey, just bought this today. It didn't happen. And that's the world we live in. But you know, the thing about me is one time I had seen, a, um, a old school rapper, right. And I saw him and I bigged him up legend. I, maybe you was with me. We had the Phantom, the Sky Blue Phantom. We in the restaurant 30 deep. Dre's with us. We in Miami. And I see him and I'm bigging him up. But as I'm bigging him up, a is with us. I'm like, yo, man, I remember I seen you in front of Apollo, wide body kit bands. You had the Nefertiti piece on. And I'm I'm really in my mind, really all jokes aside, bigging him up, trying to because right now lean back is like number one when I'm when I see right. this rapper. I'm trying to big him up to the ultimate so he can say, damn, this dude on top of the game and he's saluting me. Boom. I big him up. And he was like, all right, Joe, you know, you know, he told me something like one day something, right? He told me something in regards to one day something. The way I took it, I could take it wrong. But the way I took it is like he was saying, like one day you ain't going to be popping and no, 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 for real, like not bad. <laughs> no, he I know what you mean. Like, that was a wake up call, like, <laughs> oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. Be that. no, no, hold up, bro. <laughs> the way I took it was like, yo, one day you ain't gonna be popping like you is now, and hopefully, you know, you be looking as good as me when you would like that's how I took it, right? And Dre made me feel like shit. Dre was like, yo, how could you do that? That's the legend. I said, Dre, what are you talking about? Dre was like, yo, you was trying to play him. I said, what? I was bigging him up, legend. Right. Nah, but you kept saying about when he had the bangs, <laughs> when he had the Nefertiti, <laughs> when he was number one. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, Dre, I'm like, yo, Dre, I'm trying to pick yo. him up, legend. Like, what are you talking I swear to God, I didn't mean yo, it like I'm that. I'm laughing because I know when you first was like, I can't imagine how you laid it. No, I'm going to tell you like, a story. No, you had the, and then that other time when you yo, came through. Yeah, but I'm picking them up. But yo, Rem, look what happened. So since that day, because of what Dre told me and what he told me, I always said, I do not give a fuck how long or to the death these people are going to see me shit. Fashion-wise, jury-wise, everything up to date, living in it. I'm not doing, you know, rappers, I love them all. God right. bless them, and I'm happy for them. But some rappers, they move to little suburbs and, you know, to get a nice house, which they earn, but they out the way. They ain't got to compete with everybody. They ain't got to be extra fly. They in and out with it. You right. know, they'll go to ATL, get a nice quiet house out in the, in the sticks. It's fly. It's a mansion. But... It ain't New York in your face, Miami, L.A. in right. your face, toe to toe. That's not me, right? So I go, so the other day, I'm going to tell you an ill story. The other day, I get a FaceTime. It's Hitmaker and Meek Mill. Love Hitmaker. Right? Oh, no, no, nah, nah, Hitmaker's our guy. He got Meek Mill, yo, I'm with the Don, you know, he fronting, you know, go <laughs> crack on the FaceTime. So Meek Mill's like, yo, what's up, Joe? And Meek Mill was on his rare talk shit day. <laughs> no, listen to me, Rem. He was on a rare talk. Like, feeling himself was an understatement. Like, <laughs> no, it was an under. And I'm like, I'm looking at me, and me got some fly Louis Vuitton blue and black camouflage. So he said, look, Joe, look, leather camouflage, Louis Vuitton. <laughs> right? 
I think he had a bucket. I don't know. Then he goes down to the pants. He's like, look, let the car go. But these ain't Louis. These is uh, Rick Owen or something. Mm -hmm. And then he go down to the sneakers. You, you see these shits, yo? These like, these like $4,000, right? He didn't know who he was dealing with. <laughs> Listen to me, Rem. Yo, Rem. What you do? I felt like this was my moment <laughs> of the old school rapper. <laughs> and when I did that to him, I felt like this was it. You know, God gives you cold, karma. What goes around comes around. I said, yo, me. I said, yo, man, that shit flies shit hell. But you see this? This is 1.4 million in 2020. <laughs> 1.4 million on my wrist in 2020. You see that shit? You ever seen that before me? You ever seen this shit? Yo. Yo, bro. They prepared me for that moment. You prepared me. Like, that moment with me and, 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 and living legend, God bless, prepared me for that moment. And he tried. Like, and I said, yo, my man, look, this 2020, Bobito, in a COVID, in a COVID. And he backed up real cool. Very nicely. He said, oh, shit. I walked up the wrong tree. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> nah. Oh, man. So, um, I'm looking at your comments. Somebody said that they're performing Lean Back on a Mass Singer right now. That means we're getting a check. Most likely. You have another check. <laughs> <laughs> yo, Ram. Yo, Ram, I tell you, man, staying <laughs> home is the best shit ever happened, huh? All I speaking gotta of, do is wear white tee or black tee. How much longer? How much oh, longer? no, they building it. How much longer? Yo, Ram, damn, Ram, you know I'm, you I'm dropped waiting, that. I'm waiting. How much longer? Yo, Ram, I think February, March, uh, February, now nah, we so blessed, man. We so blessed. I made sure that I was 15 minutes from you so you could see your goddaughter every day. Well, you got the indoor pool. I got the outdoor. Uh, uh, so which means so winter, in house. winter's is in your house. <laughs> Summer's at no, night. No problem. You know, my goddaughter got her own room in the house. She, she do whatever room. she want to do. She's out of control. I'm, she's, you know she's asleep right now. She'd have been in here already. God, 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 going crazy. She's Yo, she be going crazy, man. But I love her. I love how you and Pat, you, you know what I'm saying? Y'all with the baby so much every day. I think we, we, you know, we understand, like, when we was younger, we had kids, and we didn't know where life was taking us. Now you're able to have a kid and just sit back and really... Um, Watch them grow. You're not, you're not trying to chase a bag. You still chasing the bag, but you not you don't have to chase the bag. You you're stable. You got your relationship is stable. Your household is stable. Your mind is different. It's 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 a totally different experience. Totally different. I tell people all the time that um, if you can wait until you're in your thirties to have a kid, don't have kids when you're young. It's dope when you get to grow up with them. Y'all on the same page and you listen to the same music, but. It's a total dip. You get to really feel like what it is. Like, now I feel like I feel like with my son. Love my son to death. But I feel like he's like my little brother. That's how, like, because I know when I was a teenager. With my daughter, I really feel like a parent. Like, I feel like I can't keep up with her. Like, and then the thing different. is, the thing is, Ryan, I don't know if you figured out, and this is for all the other parents, I don't know if you figured out, um, are you going to spoil her to the point of where I think we made that mistake already, right? She got, you know, she, you know what her toys are about? She has a broom already. She has a fake broom, a fake vacuum cleanup. She got her own spray bottle. I'm not playing now. This time, what happened was we grew up poor. We didn't have nothing. We had to struggle. Times we didn't know where our next meal was coming from. Winter was coming. We didn't know where our coat was coming from. School was coming. We had to go do whatever we had to do to get back to school clothes. We didn't know where we was going to sleep many a nights. So we never wanted our kids to go through that. So when we got it and they was young, we just gave them everything. They had all the latest phones, the latest clothes. They, they was walking around with jewelry on their neck, driving around in different type of cars on jets as, as young. So they never really knew what it was to have to earn anything. So we looking at it like, yo, if somebody would have gave me this, or if I would have had this, it would have changed my life, but we knew what it was to struggle. They don't know what it is to struggle. And also, we had them when we were really young. So they really think like they are friends, like we the same and we not. Did you ever undo the spoilness and no. bring them to reality? 
No, it's done. I try. It's done. When, when you try to undo it, you're the worst person in the world. You don't care about me. You don't love me. You want me to be a bum? No, I want you to be independent. I want you, I want to know that if something happens to me today or tomorrow, and for whatever reason, they took everything that I left for you, that you would be okay. That you would be able to figure out how to make your own way. And yeah, now let me tell the people some real like spell, that. right? Shout out to E. Philly. He's the ultimate grandfather these days. Uh, the, the real spell, this is, this is a scary one, but it's true. So my father has 12 kids. For some reason, whenever he's sick and he got to stay in the hospital, he got a surgery, I'm really the only one that shows up every time. And out of 12 kids, I'm the only one. And I'm the busiest one. And right? the youngest. And the youngest. So I'm up in there like, boom, I got to cancel whatever to be there with my, with, with my father or my mom's. And then... And so that got me thinking away. Then I got to talking to uh, a friend of mine. I don't know if I should say his name, but a rap dude. Um, I'll say, I'll say Rick Ross, right? So he told me the last time he was in that hospital when he, when he almost died, mm -hmm. uh, he woke up in a special ICU room where it was all glass and there's just doctors staring at them. Because most people in there got brain surgery, heart surgery, like the real shit, right. right? So he said he's in there and his family, E-class, all the boys, they fighting to come up and everybody's coming to visit him. And, um, and he's getting love. But he noticed why he was there for like a week. Nobody came to see these other people that's in critical condition, dying. So he said he asked the doctor, and the doctor was like, yo, when you get old, your kids don't give a fuck about you. They don't show up. They don't care. People don't care no more. Um, and then Ross was like, you serious? He was like, yo, I'm telling you, it's sad. He said, you see that man right there? His daughter lives five minutes away from this hospital. She didn't come see him. And so, so Ross said, you know what? After that, he said, I'm going to come home. I went and had three babies right away. So the more kids I have, Increases maybe chances. somebody <laughs> will hold me down when I get older. That's it's sad. It's really sad. I mean, I think I think it's just, it's a, it's, a, it's a space where it's one generation where it didn't really turn out too good. You know, like you knew. Yo, that's a fact. Though. You knew that, as that, a that, youngin' that. that there came a point where you had, like, by the time I was my son's age, and by the time I was 18, 19, I wasn't asking my mom for anything. I was paying my mom's bills. I was, she was coming to me for bread. So when I be seeing kids, because they call themselves kids, 20, 22, 23, 24, 20, like, yo, I'm a kid. Like, you a kid? What? Do you know what I was doing by the time I was 24, 25? And it's so crazy because we used to lie about our age. I was like 20, telling people I was 23, 24. I never looked at my age, so I don't even know why, what I thought. Nobody never believed me. But we used to lie to make ourselves appear to be older. Nowadays, people lie because they want to be younger. Like, they want to, oh, I'm, I'm 20, I'm 21. They really, they don't want to grow up. It's it's crazy. It's, it's so backwards. It's so different. They don't be knowing how to drive. They don't even have a license. It just be, it's a whole different thing. And I don't know. I think we lost the whole generation, like you said. And that's the, you the first person who ever broke it down to me like that. Because we come from a generation where our parents before us never had them. But we bust our ass. Mm -hmm. We gave it all to them. And they didn't understand what to do with it. They didn't have that hunger, that drive. Right. Um, And, and so... That shit is crazy because, you know, me, I'm the same thing like you. Since I was 14, I was in the streets. So I've been, you know what I'm saying? I've been in the streets hustling to get mine. You know, I knew for a fact that it was no way in the world I wasn't going to get rich or I wasn't going to get killed. You also but, knew there was no way in the world you could go ask your mom or your dad to buy you a pair of jeans that cost $1,000. 
you like you might get slapped for that like what you want the new balenci what <laughs> like you what 